Welcome to Conquering Quadratics Part 1. My name is Ashley Tavis and I'm one of the co-founders of csandmap.org. In this video, you will learn how to use the quadratic formula in order to calculate real solutions. Let's get started. So on the right hand side here, you will see I've just uploaded a handful of sprites. I've got my rainbow that kind of reminds me of a parabola. I created this above text here to represent a quadratic equation using the costumes. So if you come in here and you paint a sprite, you can use the text and so forth to create this piece. And you'll see why I made this in a second. And finally, I uploaded the formula, the quadratic formula, to remind our users what we're using. I'm going to go back. We can use any sprite here as we start. But as we start this program, what we're going to want to do is get input from the user what our a, b, and c value are in our quadratic equation. So right away, if we come down to the variables, we're going to hit make a variable. I'm going to have a, b, and c. Now you'll see on the right hand side why I set up my program this way. If I double click any of these, so my c value now looks as follows, double click my b value and my a value, we can see as the user types in the numbers here what our equation would look like. So again, this is a visual preference, but I think this will be really user friendly. So right away at the start of the program, we are going to ask the user using sensing, what is the A value? And whatever they type in is going to be stored in this answer block. So we wanna actually store this in our variable that we called A. Whatever they type in, we wanna store here. Now, a quick, a quick shortcut, we could do finger tap or right click and hit duplicate because now I want to know what is the B value. And finally, one more, what is the C value? Now let's try this out. So what is the A value? We'll say one, four, and seven. Now you'll notice the only thing that changes, changed here was my A value. We need to make sure in our drop down, I'm changing my letter B and I'm changing my letter C. Let's try this again. So one, three, seven. Perfect, and this is really visually, visually nice for our users as we can see exactly what the equation was going to be. So the next part of our program we should take care of is the discriminant. So as we know with quadratic equations, with the discriminant being a positive number, we're gonna have two solutions. Equal to zero, we're gonna have one, and if it's negative, we're gonna have no real solutions. So the first thing we wanna do is create another variable. We'll call it the discriminant. And we are going to set our discriminant to b squared minus 4ac. So all of our mathy blocks lie here in the operators. So b squared, we'll need a minus, some times blocks here, a couple of these. All right, super, let's set this up. So in here, we're going to have 4 times a times c. We're going to have b squared here to start, and order of operations will matter. We want to take b squared and then subtract 4 times a times c, and this will give us our discriminant. Great. And you'll notice the discriminant shows up on the screen. We can choose. We can leave that if you prefer. Otherwise, we can just uncheck this box here, and it will go away. Wonderful. All right, now we have three situations. So we're going to need an if-then-else block here. So in control, I'm actually going to do a nested loop. We're going to start with if, and I'll scroll up a bit. My code is blocked a hair. Here we go. So the first situation we could have is we could have, after we calculate our discriminant, we could have our discriminant be greater than zero, so a positive solution. Now, in this case, what we want to happen is we know we're going to have two solutions in this case. So we can put all of this code in here, but I'm going to show you how to create a function today as I feel this is going to clean up our code a bit. So how do we create a function? I'm going to come down to my blocks. And I'm going to hit make a block. And I'm going to call this root calculation. And we'll hit OK. Now you'll notice a couple of things show up. First, this define block. And second is this block over here. So this block here calls the function. Whatever we want the function to do is going to happen on this side of the screen. So let's start with our define block. So how would we calculate our roots here? 
The first thing I want us to do before we move on to our define block is I want us to pop back here to the student guide and talk about our equation in more detail, as this will come into play as we're looking at our complex solutions. So the first part we're going to do is we're going to create a part of our solution where we're solving that we're going to call the real part of the formula. So this would just be negative b divided by 2a. Then we'll call our root part of the formula the second half. So the square root, the discriminant, square root of the discriminant divided by 2a. And then we'll take the real part and we'll add it to the root. And we'll take the real part and we'll subtract the root. So that's kind of our, our next big piece here as we jump back to our program. So to start, we're going to come back to variables. We're going to make a handful of variables here. We're going to start with, we'll call it real1. And we'll say root 1 and 0 1. And I'm going to uncheck real 1 and root 1, but we'll leave 0 1 on the screen. So the first piece we're going to do, as we said, was calculate our real part. So we need negative b divided by 2a. So we'll come in our operators. And we will do negative 1 times our b value, and we will divide this by 2 times a. And we will set the real part of our solution, real 1, to this value. Great. All right, now for our root. That piece is going to be, so we're going to set our root to, we want under operators, we can find the square root down here. We want the square root of, let's see, oops, like that. There it is, the square root of our discriminant, all divided by 2a. And we can right click and duplicate some of these pieces. Great, so we've got our real piece and our root. And for our first piece, we'll say the zero is going to be zero, one. We will add real one plus root one. Real one plus root one. So for our second zero, we can use all of these calculations, but we need to subtract these. So I'm just going to come here and hit duplicate. And we're going to make some more variables. We'll have real 2 and root 2 and 0, 2. Again, I'm going to uncheck my root and my real. So all we need to change here is we need to make this say real 2, root 2. 0, 2, and then we need to subtract rather than add. Perfect. All right, so now this is just defining my root calculation. If I actually wanted to call this function, I need to come back to my blocks and put that in this piece of the code. Now, as I am calling this, so it will calculate my zeros right now. It's sometimes nice to, and I'm going to scroll down, you'll lose part of this, but that's okay. We're going to say, and I'm going to pull some join blocks. Join blocks are used here to join strings, so text, with variables. So in this case, I'm going to share the roots are, we'll say 0, 1, and... 0, 2. So we'll say that under here. Great. All right, next piece. We need a, a nested loop here. So if the discriminant is not greater than 0, we're going to come down here. And we're going to say our next piece we can look at is what if the discriminant is equal to 0. So in this case, I'm going to run the same code, the root calculation. Now we'll think about here if my root is equal to 0. Adding 0 or subtracting 0 is going to give us the same number. So really what we can share here for this piece is we just need one of our roots because they're going to be the same. 
then we can say the root is, and we can choose either 0, 1, or 0, 2, since these are going to be the same. Now the next piece of our code is kind of the most tricky piece or complex piece, hence the complex numbers. So we can imagine if we're not having a positive discriminant and we're not equal to zero, here's where we're going to drop down to it. So we may give a message like, hang on, these roots are complex. Then let's create another function here. Let's call this complex. And we're going to call complex down here as well. Now, in complex, let's think about this piece here. So, if I were to calculate everything I just did in this program here, the only difference is under the root, my discriminant is going to be negative. So I'm calculating all of the same pieces as this root calculation. However, I'm going to need an i attached to my root. So if I had the square root of 4, 2 comes out, of course, from my root. But if I have the square root of 4, or of negative 4, 2i is coming out. So we're really running the same root calculation here. However, we're attaching an i to our roots. So the first thing we need to do in order to run this same root calculation is we're going to take our discriminant. And we are going to make it positive. So as I said, if it was a negative 4, we're simply going to make it a positive 4 so that my root calculation, my root calculator up above, will take care of this if it's positive. Then I'm going to call root calculation. And my first 0 here will be, and this is going to look a little bit long, but we'll walk through it. My first 0 is going to be, we're going to need some join blocks. So we're going to take real 1, and we're going to join this with a plus sign. And we've got another join. Now here gets a little bit tricky. So if we have like the square root of negative 4, we're going to get 2i. But if we had the square root of negative 5, we have an irrational number. So it would be really nice to round this. So to round and scratch, the round block actually, so let's pull that out in operators. The round block rounds to the nearest whole number. Now with a complex, or with an irrational number here, the square root of an irrational number, um, or square root of a number that's giving us an irrational solution, we want some sort of decimal to describe that number to us a little bit more. So to work around scratch rounding to the nearest whole number, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our root, our root 1, and we're going to multiply it by 10. We're going to round this solution. Then what we're going to do is we are going to divide whatever solution that comes of by 10. And you'll note this will move me back one more decimal place to round me to the nearest 10. And you can adjust this dividing by a different value to round to the nearest hundredth, so forth. So we need we need to place this in this first piece of the join block. And then as we said, if we had the square root of 4, we get 2. The square root of negative 4 gives us 2i. So attached to our root here, we need to simply place the letter i on the end. And we can drag this all into 0, 1. Now 0, 2 is going to be the same thing, however, I am, okay. I need to change my plus sign to a minus sign. And this will give me my complex solutions. So I've called my function here, my complex function, I'm going to duplicate this C block as I'm going to be saying the same thing for my the sake of my zeros. So this complex piece gets a little bit tricky. I would say keeping it as functions keeps this as efficient and clean as possible. Best of luck as you run this with your class. 
and as always, use the student guide to assist students along the way, as well as your knowledge as you ran through this yourself. Good luck.